In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the rear manifold with catalytic converter assembly on this Ford Flex with a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated engine. Let's get started. If you have an engine cover, go ahead and remove it. Ours is missing, so we're going to move on to removing the uh, intake. First, grab this hose. This goes to the coolant overflow and just pull it aside like this. Then. We have this vacuum line right here. Pull it out of the uh, retainers over here, but be very careful because it's plastic, it's not rubber. So you don't want to snap it and break it. You'll have to replace it if you do. There we go. Now this is released from here. Now let's unplug some connectors over here. Start with this one, set it aside. And you have this line here on the back side. Right here, you have these tabs. You want to pinch them in just like this. As you pinch it, you want to push it out like that. There you go. Set this aside also. But again, this is the plastic line, so don't go too far because it will break. Let's unplug the throttle body connection here. Sometimes you'll need a little prying device to help you uh, pry the red lock. Press on the connector and slide it off. Now release the clamp that holds this intake tubing onto the throttle body. Make sure it moves. If you can't pull it off, probably needs to be unthreaded a little more. Okay, leave it just like this. Follow the intake further and you'll see that this hose for the PCV is connected to it or this line. Move this clip back and forward kind of like this. It should hold it in the unlocked position so you can pull this off and just set it aside for now. Right over here there's another clamp, eight millimeter socket also. Just unthread the, loosen it up a little bit, unthread the bolt. And this should allow you to pull this assembly out of the way here. Okay, just like that. Looks like we have a hose attached over here. So I'm going to unplug it from here. This should be able to slide up now. Set this aside. Unclamp this hose, use some pliers and uh, twist the hose clamp this way so I can grab it. But uh, once you get the hose clamp released, you should be able to pull the hose off. Sometimes these are a little tight. So just, uh, there we go. Once if you squeeze it enough, this one actually has a lock on it. So you can lock it in the open position and just leave it like that until you're ready to reinstall. A lot of times these rubber hoses will get stuck on here. So use something to very gently pry it, give it a couple twists and it should break free and uh, pop off here. There we go, set that aside over here. Make sure the clamp doesn't fall off. Now we're ready to pull the intake off and we just have to unbolt it at this point. There is one more hose connected to the backside, but we can't get to it until we pull it off a little bit. So there is a sequence to removing this intake. You start at this bolt right here, which is in the center in the front, but towards the driver's side. So one, two, three, four, then you jump over to the driver's side, skip over this one, five, six, and then go back to this one for seven. I'm gonna break them free first using an eight millimeter socket. And then once they're broken free in this sequence, I'm gonna pull them off completely. Now let's remove the bolts completely. It's important to follow the sequence so that you don't potentially damage the intake. You don't want to crack it by accident. Okay, these don't come out, they stay in the intake. So right down here between the throttle body and the intake, you'll see another eight millimeter bolt. You can actually easily reach it underneath the throttle body and uh, break it free. We'll have to remove this one. This is the last thing holding the intake on. Okay, that's broken free. Try 
I'm about to drop the bolt. At this point, the intake should be unbolted and ready to pull up and out. If you have a lot of debris here, I know I have some leaves here, but they're not here, they're underneath. So I'm not gonna worry about them yet. If you do have a lot of debris, like I said, just blow it off or vacuum it at this point. We can pull the intake up and uh, you're gonna have to get this wiring out of the way here. It looks like it's clipped onto the intake. Pry the retainer out. Slide the intake back a little bit and that's only so you can clear these hoses, lines, and wires, and then slide it up and forward, but don't go too far because we still have this hose at the back here. And to disconnect that easily, just grab some pliers, pinch the hose clamp, squeeze it, slide it off, and then move the hose off of here. You can use pliers or a little prying tool to help you slide it off. Set this aside. Now with the upper intake off, we can access everything in the rear. I'm gonna start by unplugging the connectors for the variable valve time solenoids. They have a little lock on them, this purple lock. You have to pry up and in at the same time. Sometimes it'll be a little stuck. There you go, use something to pry up. Unplug this. Unclip the harness from the valve cover. There we go, set that aside. Let's get this large harness removed from the valve cover. Okay, there we go, and we can push that off. Right behind it, it's very difficult to see, but there's a, an oxygen sensor connector. Press on the locking tab, and disconnect the O2 sensor connector, and then we have the retainer that's holding the wire. So the connector that clips onto this retainer, you'll notice that on the base of it right there, it has a little hook. We have to pry that hook down, and I'm explaining this now because you won't actually see once I get my hands in here, but pry that hook down, slide the connector down and off of this retainer, and that's how you get it off of this retainer so we can pull the wiring harness off. <coughs> okay, there's the connector, it popped off. Now that we have this O2 sensor unplugged, Pull the wire down, get your O2 sensor socket over the sensor. Make sure your socket is seated perfectly on the base of the O2 sensor so it doesn't strip out. And this might be a little stuck. It'll probably take some force, but there we go. This one broke free. It wasn't too rusty. I'm just gonna keep turning it with this tool until it's loose enough to turn by hand. which is right about here actually. So that's good. I'm gonna take my tool off, remove the sensor, and set it aside safely. Now the 14 millimeter, take off both of these mounting nuts. Now with the rear pipe unbolted, the O2 sensor's out of the way, let's unbolt the two 15 millimeter bolts here that hold this pipe onto the front catalytic converter slash manifold so that we can pull the pipe down and free up the rear one. I spray them with uh, rust penetrant so they can hopefully break free a little bit easier. It looks like it worked. Okay, take this last one off, swing it down, and I have a bungee cord here to support the pipe. I don't want it to let it hang all the way down so that the flex pipe further back doesn't potentially get damaged. Take this gasket and set it aside safely so that you can reuse it later if it looks in good condition like this one. I know it's rusty, but this is still totally reusable. This is a steel gasket. It has a little lip here that's raised up. This will compress and that's what makes the seal. Now let's disconnect the harness from the retainer here on the stud. Just try to get something in here and pry it up and off without actually breaking anything. A lot of times these are very tight on here. Okay, get that off of here. Continuing down the line, unplug, this is uh, for the coolant temp sensor, unplug that connector. Tuck it out of the way and uh, keep popping this harness off of these retainers. We'll need access to all these studs. Just like this. 
let's unplug the ignition coils, pry the locking tabs back a little bit, and then you can press the connector, get it off of here. Just do the same down the line. Be careful with these not to pry too hard or, or you'll break them. And this. Okay, with this off, you don't have to unplug the fuel injectors. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. You can just get this off of here and this off of the back here. And then we'll set the whole harness aside. Okay. There we go. Looks like there's one more retainer over here. Okay. This is the kind that slides over the stud. This harness is loose now. I'm gonna put it over this bracket so it can be out of our way. You don't have to, but you can unplug the fuel injectors so you can set the whole harness to the side like this. You still can't go very far with it but at least you can get this part out of your way and have a clear shot at the valve cover. Twist this hose a little bit so we can get to the clamp better. Grab it with pliers and slide it up and off. Just like this. Pull the hose off and set it aside. Now we have to remove the three ignition coils. Use an eight millimeter socket. With the bolts out, you can just pull these straight up. There we go, sometimes they're a little stuck. I like to put them back right where they came from, so I'm gonna keep them in order. You don't have to, it's just good practice. And now we can unbolt the valve cover. Now let's unbolt the valve cover. You wanna start in the center and work your way out and go in a cross pattern, kind of. That doesn't have to be perfect. Either way, 10 millimeter socket will remove all of the fasteners. Some are bolts, some are studs, get them all off. Note that they don't actually come out of the valve cover. They stay here, but make sure they're unthreaded all the way. bolt is all the way in the middle on the left side. A little, little harness connection over here, retainer actually, that I forgot about. Now with that off, you can lift the valve cover up. It's not going to slide right off because first of all, it's going to be somewhat stuck on here. Second of all, we have spark plug tube seals and the seals that go around the VVT solenoids. All of these need to slide straight up before the valve cover actually breaks free. Try to avoid prying on stuff. You can pry very gently, especially here and uh, maybe over here a little bit. Just be very careful what you pry on. You don't wanna break the valve cover. You don't wanna damage the fuel rail and you don't wanna crack the lower intake, which is plastic. Best way to do this is to give it a couple wiggles. A lot of times you can get it to break free like that. If not, we'll do some very gentle prying. Okay, there we go. That corner broke free. Let's try over here. 
Yep, perfect. Over here, they don't give you much to pry on. gentle again. You don't want to break anything and if you have a lot of debris here make sure you clean it up first. Should have mentioned that. Mine, my vehicle is very clean here so I don't need to worry about it. Get everything out of your way and slide the valve cover up and off. On this large harness that runs at the back here you'll notice the O2 sensor connector. If you twist the connector you'll be able to push on the lock, slide this out and I'm gonna pull this harness up and out of my way I'll most likely just use a bungee cord and tie it over there so that it stays out and I can have a clear path here to everything else. Now let's remove this bracket here. It has two 10 millimeter bolts. It's going to be fairly tight in here and uh, almost impossible to see, but you can feel the bolts. One is right here. Before I take that one out completely, I'm just going to loosen this one up as well. There's one. Okay, there's the bolt with the bracket. Set those aside. Now there are these two 10 millimeter bolts here that we'll have to remove so we can get this shield off. Here's one of them. Let's take the other one off. Here's the other one. Make sure that when you lift anything up here, it doesn't get inside the engine since we have the valve cover off. Two more bolts, one here and one here, also 10 millimeter. Let's get these off as well. Okay, there's that one. And there's the other one. And now we can pull the shield up and off. Once again, be careful when you pull it off so debris doesn't get on the engine, or in the engine. Push this wire through. This is gonna stay here. And this is why we're removing this shield first so we can get to the oxygen sensor a lot better. Now let's get the O2 sensor out. Put the socket over just like this. I'm gonna get a, a small extension in here so I can actually fit my ratchet. And let's try to break this free. Wow, that broke free, perfect. Get your socket off of here. And spin the O2 sensor right off. There it is, set it aside safely. This manifold is being held on my six 13 millimeter mounting nuts. There is one on each side, one here and one here. You can't see those, I can't even see them. And then there are three on top. I'll start with the top ones. Doesn't really matter where you start. There's one. Okay, this one pulled the whole stud out. That's fine. I'll show you how to separate this later. Now let's get the one on the side here. You can get it through the fender wheel area if you can't get it from up top, which we tried, but the swivel on the air gun cut too much torque out. There it is. Now let's get the one off on the other side. Stud came out on this one. The stud came out on this one with the nut, that's okay. Now the last mounting nut is unfortunately right underneath and you can't get it from up top. So I'm going to stick an extension up, it's a 13 millimeter also, try to get the socket on there. I do have a swivel on because I don't have another option. You have to have a swivel on this one. Okay, there it is. Okay. 
Okay, go slow. You don't want to break that stud in there. Okay, the stud came out with a nut. That's fine. We'll fix that later. Now let's take this shield off so we can unbolt the motor mount so we can swing the engine forward. Two 10 millimeter nuts hold this on. There's one and two. Set the shield aside and this will expose the engine mount. Now let's unbolt the engine mount. You can do it different ways between the combination of hardware that's here. I'm just gonna go for removing this one. That'll leave everything attached and it'll swing the whole mount off of the frame. Just like this. As you can see, the engine rocks back and forth now. I'm using my floor jack with a rubber pad on it. If you don't have this, use a piece of wood or whatever you have, just don't put the steel jack right into the oil pan. I'm going right on the corner of the oil pan where it curves. That's the strongest point of it. Give it one pump, two at most. You don't wanna actually raise it. You just wanna take the weight off of it. And now you can unbolt the engine mount in several places, but I'm just gonna unbolt the three 18 millimeter bolts that hold this bracket onto the frame. So there's one at the front, two at the back. Doesn't matter which ones you do first. There's one, set it aside. And the two in the back here, just watch out for any lines that are in the way. You don't want to break anything. I'll just go for this one and then I'll use a swivel on the other one. Okay, now, because the engine is supported, I'm gonna jack it up a little more. There we go, it's going up. You can pull it forward just like this. Obviously, we're not gonna move it all the way, but this should be enough to get us that manifold out. Now pull the manifold back, up, and right up and out. Be very careful not to get too much debris inside the engine. There it is. Now from underneath, let's remove the old gasket. You can pull the studs off if you want. I'm gonna leave mine on. The gasket on this stud right here is the kind that kind of locks in with these tabs, so it'll be a little bit difficult to get off. I'm gonna try and slide it off on the other end first because it's not locked in, and then maybe I can pry this side off. There we go. To get this to slide off of here. Take the gasket out. Now let's clean the surface. I'm gonna use a razor blade and gently scrape off any debris that's here, including this carbon buildup. The reason I'm using a razor blade is because it is a flat surface. By hand, it's gonna be difficult to damage this aluminum surface, and you definitely don't wanna use coarse sandpaper, a sanding disc on a uh, die grinder or anything else that you have. You want to be very gentle here. You don't want to ruin the surface. You could use a sanding block, which I might, but make sure it's a good quality sanding block with fine sandpaper, such as probably 320 grit or higher. You don't want to go any more coarse than that, but definitely start with a razor blade and scrape off corrosion and any other debris that has built up here. Now to get this nut off of the stud, if it's not too rusty, if it's severely damaged, just get new hardware, get new studs, new nuts. But you can clamp it down in a vise or hold it with locking pliers, whatever works for you. Then take the appropriate size wrench, 13 millimeter for me. I'm gonna actually tighten the nut first, as in bring it up as if I wanted to tighten it extra because as you can see, the threads over here are clean. So I'm gonna bring it up a few turns. This spins very easily, that's perfect. Then I will put some more rust penetrant on it I know I already did, but more will actually help it slide off easier. If needed, you can take a wire brush, brush these threads a little bit so that it cleans off any rust, and then take your wrench and turn the nut down, try to get it off of the threads. As you get to the rusted area, you may have to work it back and forth a little bit. I worked it back and forth a few times. Now it spins even more freely, which is perfect because you want it to be as free as possible so that when you release it out of whatever you're clamping it into, so you can actually get the nut off, you want it to stay. So I'm gonna very carefully pinch it right here where, the, uh, where there are no threads. I don't wanna damage any threads. Now I can take the rest of the nut off just like this, set it aside, release the stud, Inspect it, everything looks perfect. This is good to reuse. Again, if yours are damaged, rotted, or you can't even separate the nut from it, just uh, get some new ones. 
Now let's put the studs back that have come out, this being one of them. I'm just gonna start them all in. We are only using six studs out of the 12 threaded holes here for the exhaust ports. And the pattern is, obviously you can look at the manifold and figure that out, but just so you know, the pattern from the passenger side over to the driver's side is gonna be bottom, top, top, bottom, top, bottom. And then there's gonna be the one on the bottom here that we uh, took out, which is gonna be this one. Okay, now let's snug these up. Make sure they go in nice and smooth, just like this one. And to tighten them, as soon as it bottoms out, just give it a little bit extra. You don't wanna make them very tight because these will tighten up when you put the mounting nuts on as you tighten the nut and torque it. I don't think we're gonna be able to torque it just because of the angle here. So there you go, give it about a quarter turn after it bottomed out. Basically the nut will put pressure on one end of the stud, trying to pull it out of the head basically, therefore putting pressure on both ends of the threads. So that's how these get fully tightened. So bottomed out, not even a quarter turn, almost an eighth and it just, it got really snug. So I'm gonna leave it there, get my socket off and let's get, this one in, and then there's another one to be put in there, but we'll wait for that one. Perfect. And there's that last one. Let's tighten that one up too. That's snug, give it a little extra. I'll stop right there. Now grab the new gasket, slide it over. Should line up perfectly with all of the studs and a couple of them, this one and two on the other side should be locked in basically has these little tabs around where the stud go and it's going to hold it in place just like this. Now let's get the exhaust manifold in, slide it down. Be careful not to get debris inside the engine. Keep going down and back like that. Oops, make sure the gasket doesn't fall off. Oh, there we go, that just fell into place. That's all right. Slide it over the studs. Try to line it up the best you can from up here. It's not easy to see. Okay, there we go, that's on. Let's put one of the mounting nuts on so that it stays. I started on the center mounting nut. I'm not looking to tighten it or anything. I just want it on a couple threads so that if this does slide down, it's not going to fall off completely. At this point, let's install the other ones. Now let's put the rest of the mounting nuts on. the manifold up if needed. Okay. There we go. Just make sure the thread on well. These are, so that's good. There's one over here at the bottom. And then there's gonna be one on this side over here, symmetrical to that one. Now let's tighten up the mounting nuts. I'm gonna start in the center and work my way towards the outer ones. I'm just going to snug them. I have my air gun set to the lowest possible setting. The torque for these is 18 foot-pounds, but because of their location and angle, I cannot get my torque wrench down there, so I'll have to tighten them by hand. But 18 foot-pounds basically just means nice and tight. Raise the engine up, naturally it's gonna to wanna to spring back. Drop it down, raise it up again. Push it if necessary. Just try to line up the, uh, the bolt holes of the engine mount, just like this. Drop it down once it lines up, right there. If we need to, we can uh, always resituate it after, but I wanted this situated in place so that as we go down and finish everything up underneath, including that lower engine mount, everything's lined up. Then once we're back here, we'll put these in because I want the engine to still move around a little bit so we can line the bottom one up. Now from underneath, let's tighten up the nut on the other side. And since I'm here, I'm just gonna double check this one by hand. 
Okay. That's nice and snug. Perfect. Now let's put the nut on that goes underneath. Try to get it on with the extension and the swivel. Make sure it starts on nice and smooth. You don't want it cross-threading. And this one is uh, going on well, so I'm going to tighten it up. Okay, this rag, piece of rag that you see here, I put on so that I can have the uh, nut held onto the socket a little tighter. Just a little tip for you if you need to have the nut basically temporarily stuck to the socket. Put a little piece of rag in between there. All right, now with my deep socket on, I'm going to tighten this one up by hand. Okay, that's nice and tight. Let's get our tools out of here. Now pry the engine backwards, stick the bolt through, line up the threads, and start the bolt in just like so. Let's tighten it up. Make sure it lines up with exactly where it was before. That's how you have the best chance of putting the engine mount in the least stressful position for it, basically. You don't want it under tension. Now let's make sure this is nice and snug. Just like that. Perfect. Now let's get this shield up. Line it up with both studs. Put the two mounting nuts on. And we'll tighten them up. Make sure you don't over tighten these. They're very small, so they can easily break. Just get them snug. Now, before we bolt up the exhaust pipe, you want to make sure that your surfaces where it bolts up both on the pipe and on the existing manifold on the front here are good. Mine is pretty good, uh, but I will hit it with a wire wheel just to make sure that it is nice and flat. You want the gasket to completely seal up. You don't want to have to come back here and fix exhaust leaks. So be gentle. Don't damage the surface. Make sure it's still flat. That's why I'm using a wire wheel, not anything that'll dig in here, uh, but I want it nice and clean. And now before the pipe goes onto the rear manifold, Right here, it does not take a gasket. This pipe is flanged out and cups on the manifold. So you wanna make sure that this surface is nice and clean like this, nice and smooth. If yours is rusted and pitted, clean it up the best you can, either with something that'll sand it down or with a wire wheel. This is what I used. Just get it in here and lightly touch it up. I don't have to because mine looks perfect, but you wanna make sure it seals on the manifold. If it doesn't, if it's damaged, well, if it's very rotted, you're going to want to replace the pipe. But if you have to, you can use a little bit of sealant. They make special sealant, and it's basically like a paste that dries up and will help seal up the area where there is no gasket. Now let's get the gasket on the front here. Slide it on. Make sure it lines up. Hold it so it doesn't fall. Slide the pipe on and put back the two mounting nuts. Don't tighten them up yet. I wanna wait until the rear is attached and lined up with the two mounting nuts so I know that everything is perfectly lined up and only then will I tighten this down. Let's put the rear part of the exhaust on. Slide this up, make sure that this seats properly. Again, there is no gasket, so if that surface is not seated correctly or if it's corroded or pitted, it's not going to seal up and you definitely don't want any exhaust leaks. Tighten these up. Tighten them evenly, that way the pipe seats perfectly. I'm tightening them with the uh, electric impact, but I will come back by hand to make sure that they are not over tightened, but also tight enough. Okay, let's move to the front before we finalize this one. Okay, that's nice and snug. And nice and tight. Double check this one. There we go. Tighten these up. Once again, you want to make sure they're even so that it puts even pressure on this flange and on the pipe. Okay. Now let's get the O2 sensor back in, the downstream. I put some anti-seize on the threads. You want to do that because it'll actually not only help it slide in a little bit better and thread on smoother, but it'll hopefully prevent it from being stuck next time you go to take it out. The anti-seize will not allow the two metals to seize together. So 
get the wire up there and I'm not going to plug it in until this is fully tightened because I don't want to twist it and then end up twisting the wire too much. So let's grab a 22 millimeter wrench. It'll be easier than the O2 sensor socket and just make sure this is nice and snug. This harness I'm going to push up and out of the way here, but this will not be reconnected until the valve cover is on so we can lay that harness over the valve cover because the end of it is where, what connected to this. Now back up top, let's double check all the ones up here. They are pretty much tight, but I'm gonna give them a, an extra snug by hand, especially since I can't torque them. There we go. Obviously you don't want to over tighten them. You don't want to break them or strip them out. Ah, perfect. Now let's get the oxygen sensor in, thread it on, make sure the wire doesn't tangle up. So obviously leave it unplugged for now. Let's get our O2 sensor socket. You can use a 22 millimeter wrench if you want, but space is very limited here. So the O2 sensor socket will do a lot better. Grab the socket with an extension. Set it down on the O2 sensor, make sure it's seated well. You don't want it to jump off and strip the cutout for the socket. Give it a good snug. Now, because this is not a new sensor, it's not going to have a gasket here to crush. Usually new sensors will squeeze a little copper gasket there, but this one doesn't have it. So just make sure it's nice and snug. Now let's get the shield on here. Slide it down. And before you actually put it in to place, just slide the wire through it for the O2 sensor. If you have new hardware that you want to install, which I do because my bolts are in poor condition, go ahead and do that. You want this secured properly because if it's only partially secured, it's going to rattle around like this as you drive. You're going to hear some horrible noises and you don't want that. Also, I strongly recommend putting this back even if it's in poor condition. Maybe you can find some washers to put on here to clamp it down because this shield will protect a lot of heat from getting onto the firewall, any fuel break or AC lines that you have here. So you want to make sure it's back where it belongs. With this lined up, to start on the bolts, whatever lines up first. Okay, there's one. Start the second one. Let's do this one. Okay, there are two at the bottom here. Once you have the top two lined up, these should somewhat fall into place, kind of, more or less. It'll be easier to line them up. Okay, let's grab our 10 millimeter socket. Make sure these are nice and snug. Nice and snug. <clears throat> Perfect. Let's plug the O2 sensor back into this harness. Make sure it clicks, set it aside. Now with the engine mount lined up, if yours doesn't line up, just jack up the engine again just slightly to raise it off of the frame. Wiggle it back and forth until it lines up. Then drop your bolts in by hand. You don't want to cross thread these because if you do, it's going to be a not so much of a fun time to get the threads back. Start in this last one and then we'll tighten them up. Once they are tightened up, again, make sure everything is centered and uh, these get torqued to 66 foot pounds. But like I said, first let's bottom them out. That's one, two, three. Now let's get the torque wrench. Doesn't matter which one you do first. Again, 66 foot pounds. There's one, two, and three. Now before the valve cover goes on, we have to clean up the surface of the block here, or the head. This is very clean actually, but there is some corrosion and debris built up around where the gasket goes, and I don't want this potentially getting under the gasket as we slide it on. Also, in this area right here, where the head and the timing cover are split, there is some existing RTV, which we'll have to scrape off. I recommend a razor blade because you can easily peel it off like this, get it nice and clean. Try not to scrape anything into the engine. If a little bit falls down, it's not the end of the world, but obviously try to avoid it. Scrape away from the engine, just like this. It's never gonna look perfect, but you do wanna clean it up the best you can, get all this debris off. And using a razor blade, in my opinion, is the easiest way to do it because you can scrape it flat, it's not gonna damage the surface, and you have the ability to scrape away from the inside of the engine. So just go around and do the whole surface like this. 
I have a rag with some brake parts cleaner here. I'm going to degrease the surface. It's important that no oil is here, especially right here where we scraped off the old RTV. We're gonna put on some new RTV. It's important that you don't put too much. I'll show you exactly how much to put, but make sure the whole surface around the valve cover is degreased. You'll have another spot with RTV symmetrical to this one on the backside right here where it's a little more difficult to see. Basically, it's right where the timing cover meets the head. Now with all of it degreased, grab some RTV and I'm using black because it's oil resistant. Put a little bit on, just about this much. You don't need more than this. Any more than this will squish out. On the outside is not a big deal, but you don't want it to get inside the engine. Do the same on the back side here. When you install your valve cover, make sure the gasket isn't falling off. Take the valve cover, slide it on. Be very careful so you don't pinch the gasket or cause it to fall off. Line it up the best you can. Something's getting caught here. There's a wiring harness back here. Make sure that's not getting caught. And I'm gonna feel around to make sure the gasket around the perimeter is still secured and attached to the valve cover, which it is for me. And at this point, you just have to line up the VVT solenoids here. They do move around a little bit and that's gonna help you line them up, but they still need some persuasion. So I'll push this down, do the same around the uh, spark plug tube seals and once one or more of the mounting hardware lines up thread these on I'm going to start all of them in by hand before I tighten any of them and then I'm going to snug them up going from the center out then we'll come back and torque them let's snug these up okay as soon as the valve cover starts going down that's where I'm going to stop like I said, I'm just bringing these down nice and bottomed out, but then we'll come back and torque them. Now let's torque the valve cover down. The torque sequence is starting from the outer most bolts towards the inner ones. You wanna start on the rear passenger side on this corner, cut across to the front driver's side, then across to this one, and so on and so forth, going across pattern. The torque is 89 inch pounds, which converts to 7.4 foot pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench that can go that low or for some reason doesn't fit in here, just make them nice and snug with a quarter inch ratchet. 7.4 foot pounds is not a lot. Now that they're all torqued, I'm gonna to go around one more time. This time I'm just gonna go in a circle because they are properly torqued, but with rubber gaskets like these or silicone, the gasket will squish down and the first few bolts that you tighten are now loose because the last few that you tighten crushed that gasket and created slack on the first ones. Let's get this PCV hose back on, slide it over all the way down, 
grab the hose clamp with some pliers, bring it down. Make sure you don't put it all the way down here to where it's going to come off the hose, but not all the way up where it's bending either. Like this is perfect. Now we can put the ignition coils in. Before I put them in, I put a little bit of silicone paste on the end. If you don't necessarily have to, but I recommend it. This will prevent moisture from building up between this and the spark plug, and it will allow the boot not to get stuck in the future. A lot of times they get stuck from heat cycles over time. Slide all three down. Put the three mounting bolts in. And let's snug them up. Make sure they're nice and tight. Once they bottom out, give them about an eighth of a turn. That should be plenty tight. Let's put the wiring harness back over. Try to line it up the best you can here. Had several areas where it was locked in, especially on the back side of the valve cover. It locked in here with this, just like this. On the studs, it had these retainers that slip over and lock in, as well as back here. On the front, I'm going to connect the connectors as I go. So I'll put the ignition coils on, lock them all down. I'll put the injectors in, make sure these click. Now let's secure the harness down with the retainers that slide over the studs, one on the corner, one over here, and another one right here. This connector is for the coolant temp sensor that we unplugged. Plug that back in, set it down and out of the way. Follow the harness along. Over here you'll see another tab that secures it here. And don't forget to plug in the VVT solenoids. You can't really mix them up because one wire is shorter than the other. So as long as you secure it here, they won't reach to the wrong one. Now let's put the O2 sensor in, which is all the way at the back here. Make sure it clicks. This was supposed to be secured here, but unfortunately my retainer broke, so I can't re-secure it. But it is out of the way of everything, so that's good. Now let's put this bracket back here. It's going to be very difficult to see the bolt holes. You're going to have to just feel for them. I'm going to put this bolt through so it can be ready to catch onto the threads as soon as they, they line up. You can see this through the fender well area, but you can't be up here and there at the same time, unfortunately, so it'll be a little bit difficult. Here's what these look like from underneath. You have two bolts, one you can't really see very well because of the shield. Now let's tighten these up. Okay, that one's snug. I'm going to snug the other one up too before I tighten them fully. Alright, make sure these are nice and snug. That's one. And two. Perfect. Now let's get the upper intake on. Make sure all the gaskets are still in position. Mine are. Before we completely put it on, we need to reattach this hose at the back here. It'll be a lot easier to do it now rather than after this is already in. So make sure it's bottomed out completely. Just like that. Now let's grab some pliers, get that clamp on. position it right about where it was before. Now we can line up the rest of the intake with the lower intake. Make sure you don't pinch any wires or hoses in here. Get these out of the way. There we go. That lines up perfectly right there. Manually start in the bolts so that you can make sure that not only are they not cross-threading, but if they all start in, you know you're perfectly lined up, so you have nothing else to worry about. Okay, one more over here. And one more back here. Okay, before I attach anything else, I'm going to tighten this down so that other than that hose in the back, nothing is putting 
pressure on it. Not that the hoses or the wires would put pressure on it, but I just want it to seat perfectly and I want to know that it's installed fully. I'm going to snug these down with my eight millimeter socket. And then the sequence for this is one, two, three, four, and then cross over five, six, and then back to the middle, number seven. Remember, there is one more bolt that goes underneath the throttle body all the way in the back on that bracket, but we'll worry about that later. That one is not part of the sequence. Just make them snug. I'm not torquing them yet. And double check the first few. Okay, now let's torque them to 89 inch pounds in the same sequence, and then we'll do an additional 45 degrees after the 89 inch pounds. 89 inch pounds is about 7.4 foot pounds. That's 89 inch pounds for all of them, but I will go over it again because as with all rubber gaskets, the first few might loosen up as you tighten the last few. And because we have degrees involved to finish torquing them, you wanna make sure that your base torque, which is a foot pound number, is correct. If your initial torque or the base torque is not right, once you do the degrees, the ones that are not properly tightened will be off to a different final torque. I have a torque wrench that reads degrees, so I have it set to 45 degrees, but if you don't have this, you can just use a ratchet or a little breaker bar and go an eighth of a turn. You can either mark the bolt or just visually look at it as you're turning. That's it right there, same sequence. At this point, they're all torqued. You don't want to touch the bolts anymore. If you doubt yourself, you're going to have to loosen them up and start all over again. If you continue tightening or even loosening at this point, you completely ruin the procedure that we just did. And the final torque will be out of spec. Underneath the throttle body, if you follow it, it's very difficult to see, but there's going to be that bracket that had a bolt going through it. We uh, removed it with an extension, slide that bolt in, get this started, bottomed out, and tightened down. nice and snug. Let's reconnect all the connectors and hoses around the throttle body here. Connect the throttle body itself. Make sure that clicks. You didn't hear it. I didn't hear it, but I felt it. Lock the connector in. Now let's put this hose back on this valve here. Lock it down and connect the electrical connector for it. Make sure that clicks. Next we had a vacuum hose over here. Slide that over, bottom it out all the way. Let's get this clamp back on here, lock that hose on. This was uh, just pointed down over here. This coolant hose that goes across was secured on these plastic retainers. And then this vacuum line, actually it's just a plastic line, secures itself onto the retainers on the fuel rail. Let's put the air intake duct back. 
slide it over the air filter housing and make sure that on the bottom, this lip doesn't roll over. You want it to seat on the housing just like this. There we go, press it on all the way. Now, on this side, put it over the throttle body. Once again, make sure it seats. the way around just like this give it a couple spins to ensure this hose goes back on here this one back on here make sure this clicks now with this situated properly let's tighten up the two hose clamps eight millimeter socket one over here don't make them very tight just snug these strip out easily and once they they do you have to replace it with a new one just like that Perfect. Now, if you had an engine cover, you'd put it back on. It goes onto these grommets here, but ours is missing, so we don't have anything to put back on. At this point, you can do the same to the front part of the engine or the, the front bank. The only difference is gonna be to get this hose off. Well, you're gonna have to pry on this locking tab, and then you may have to disconnect this wiring harness differently, uh, such as following it up there and pulling it off so you can set it aside. But other than that, the procedure is the same. Now, because the valve cover was off, as always, I strongly recommend an oil change. Now with the engine back together, make sure it runs nice and smooth. You shouldn't have any vacuum leaks. And if there is something wrong, just double check all of your electrical connectors, fuel injectors, ignition coils, other plugs, make sure everything is reconnected properly. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.